All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to the webinar today. Uh, thanks so much for joining. Um, if you guys have been with us before to, on some other webinars, thanks for coming back. If you're new to jazz and this is one of your first deep dives, I hope you'll enjoy. Um, today, we're going to go over um, getting creative, employer branding on a budget. Um, presented by myself, I'm Lila. You guys may have talked to me before on some calls or called in and had a question for me. Um, and I'm also joined by Randy, who's going to be helping uh, answer questions and uh, kind of moderating some of the questions. And then our presenter is um, Amber Costello. She's the director of HR at Surfline slash WaveTrack. And she's been a, a longtime jazz customer and uh, jazz evangelist. And we're a big fan. Um, so she's going to help you guys figure out how to make the most of the free tools that you have or some of your existing tools um, to really get your employer brand out there and make your um, your company a great place to look and feel and work at. So um, I am going to pass everything out to Amber. So Amber, take it away. All right, thanks so much, Lila, and hi, everyone. Um, I'm super excited to be able to give you some tips that have worked really well for us here at Surfline and um, show you some of the successes that we've been able to have as a company with recruitment. So I want to walk through just a quick um, overview of what we'll be talking about today. So talking about um, first and foremost being able to overview um, and overhaul your careers page, um, finding the right ATS, uh, creating engaging job postings, leveraging your social media efforts for recruitment purposes, and encouraging your employees to think like recruiters, and just some other creative tips um, and ways to, and ideas to promote your employment brand. So I'll tell you a little bit about me and kind of my journey here with, with Surfline. So um, I've been in human resources for about 10 years, and prior to that I spent six years in agency recruitment. So I've always had ownership of the talent acquisition function, even when I did transition over into the HR world. Um, and I joined Surfline about a little over a year ago and to start human resources here. So it had never existed at its, as its own function. And um, it was during a pretty big and significant period of growth and change within the company. And I was tasked um, initially to double the size of our existing software engineering department as well as our product teams. So um, the huge you know, responsibility on my plate as well as you know, just initiating the HR function as a whole and wearing all of those different HR hats, hats by myself. So, <clears throat> I am curious, first of all, since we're on this webinar, I want to get a pulse on a few different things before we get into the rest of the, the slides here. Um, my first question for you is um, if you have an employer brand budget specifically for recruitment. I'll just give it a couple seconds here to make sure we get the responses here so I can share it with everyone. Okay, looks like we're we're pretty much there, so I'm gonna close out this poll here really quick and share the results with you right here. So what I thought, 81% um, say no, 19% say yes. So just so you know, when I walked into my role at Surfline, I pretty much had zero budget to work with. So with all of this growth and change that we had planned, um, I had to get pretty creative and pretty scrappy in my approaches to recruitment and specifically employment branding. So we'll get into that. Um, my second question here, I am also curious to just find out if you had heard of Surfline prior to this webinar. So um, if you could just take a couple seconds and answer that for me as well. Okay, looks like everyone has voted. And also, what I thought, 89% of you have not heard of Surfline <laughs> prior to um, this webinar. So, which leads perfectly into my next slide, which what is Surfline and what are we all about? Um, so, we are first and foremost a tech company. 
Uh, we specialize in providing live and predicted ocean weather information in the form of surf forecasts, editorial content. Um, we actually have three different products here. Surfline is the most popular and has the most users. Um, we also have two other products, one called Buoy Weather and another one called Fish Track. So we have both web and mobile platforms for these products. Um, we obtain our revenue through um, subscribers. Um, we also have av advertising revenue that comes through as well through both the mobile and web properties. So um, this poll is pretty accurate to what I've found coming out into the market and looking for tech talent and just recruiting in general was that we're such a niche specific market and we're really <laughs> dominate um, the Southern California market specifically for surfing um, being our biggest product. So I think what I came across was just educating not only our executive management and um, in terms of recruiting processes that you know the general public does not know what Surfline does or who we are. Surfers know, they love us. Um, I've definitely run into a lot of people through recruiting and just being out that are super passionate about our products, they love what we do. We've been around since 1985 so we have a super strong name in what we do. Um, we don't have a ton of competition for what we do. There's a lot of smaller companies that are out in the market but they're very niche specific to different regions. A lot of them are you know, small international groups. Um, so we have a very, very strong name. We provide um, the official surf forecasting for the World Surf League. It's, it's huge, but when you're looking at trying to attract hardcore engineers, software engineers, data engineers, mobile engineers, in this crazy competitive engineering market that we're in right now in terms of recruitment, um, we weren't building the brand for ourselves. We didn't have the name recognition out in the tech world for what we do. We're not Google. We're not Amazon. Um, but once you know you get in here, people are really excited about the product. We're rebuilding everything from scratch. It's super enticing to engineers. But how do I sell that? And how do I do that with very limited funds to to market and create that brand awareness in the marketplace? So that you know put me into a very you know interesting uh, dilemma to have no more <laughs> budget to recruit but you know here I have this amazing you know company and this amazing brand you know that people can work in and how do I sell that so first things first I wanted to give you guys a glimpse at what our careers page used to look like now putting yourself in an engineering perspective this is so boring. I mean, to anyone, I think it, you look at it, you're like, okay, that's super interesting. It's like black and white. There's no photo. There's nothing. It's just like blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is what I walked into with our careers page a year ago. Um, just very undynamic. So, and, and just to give you a glimpse on what recruiting was like too, it was post a job, have a link there, not even a link, excuse me, it was an email address for our applicants to not even put in an application into a system. It was send your resume to a techjobs at surfline.com email address or marketingjobs at surfline.com email address. All of those emails and resumes were going into hiring managers directly to manage recruitment themselves. It was literally the post and pray method. There was no other source of recruiting or advertising. It was just, no, we just posted on the careers page. And I'm like asking managers, you know, my first week on the job, I'm like, well, how do we scale and how do you recruit and how are we managing all that? And that was our strategy. So once again, we weren't showing anything about our culture. We weren't showing what it was like and why it's awesome and why people should want to work at Surfline. So my first project on the job was, you know, I need to showcase this. It's an awesome place to work. We have an amazing product, and this is an amazing opportunity for people. And this, I've learned in the past year of doing this, has been such a rewarding and really, really fun hat to wear among all of the other HR hats that I wear, this being the most creative and the most opportunity for me to kind of think outside the box and have a lot of fun with this. And so the first thing that I did was let's revamp our careers page. So this was our first version that launched within the first month or so that I started here. Um, I formed a committee that existed of people from different areas of the business, so people from product, people from engineering, people from marketing. I wanted to get everyone's perspective on how we could make our careers page awesome. And the great thing is, we're a tech company, and people were so on board with this idea. Um, they were so excited. It just kind of took me coming in to like lead the force. 
And so this is our first kind of go, go through, which has a much different feeling. Um, these are pictures um, of actual employees working at Surfline. Um, we also did a survey to the company to find out, you know, what are the reasons why you love working here? And we came up with our top five reasons. We had different pictures with each of these quotes um, from existing employees. It just is a lot more dynamic and engaging. Then fast forward to what it looks like now, and I encourage all of you to go to our careers page directly today to look at this. It is so much more dynamic. It's so much more interesting. It's you know, engaging to someone who's in a technical role, um, you know, it caters to an engineer. Um, we actually have engineers as a separate tab at the top. So it's much more realistic and much more what we're all about here as a company and kind of putting us back into the forefront of the modern age. So I'm going to let Lila take it over from here. Awesome. Thanks so much, Amber. Yeah, I just wanted to, while I had you guys, um, touch on the capabilities um, in Jazz just to briefly get started with some of these. Obviously, you know, Amber has taken it to the next level, um, but I am going to just show you just what you can do um, in Jazz uh, to kind of make that happen for you. So we're going to go over um, just where you can brand your current Jazz hosted page. So if you guys have um, just a standard hosted page, you don't have your logo on there, um, you're not really editing any of your colors, and this is what I mean by the hosted page. This is your um, company name and then applytojob.com will be the Jazz hosted page. This is the first thing your candidates see if they find you on the job boards, um, if they're searching around um, for your company. So this is the application page. So it's pretty critical um, to kind of keep that branding consistent. So what you can do, and is most people will have this responsive layout, which means it'll actually resize um, and be viewable on mobile devices. So if you have candidates that want to come in and apply on their phones, it'll look really nice on their phones as well. And this is just kind of an idea of what it would look like. Um, so if you don't have that checked off right now, definitely check this box. And then um, you will actually have this updated version versus our old one here. Um, so then you can come in here and click Edit This Layout. And you can see you have these color options at the top. So if you do have brand colors with specific um, hex codes for your colors, you can get those from your marketing team and just paste them in so you're consistent. Um, if you want to approximate, you can just drag your color picker through here um, to pick colors that are similar to your brand colors. You can come down through here and upload your logo. You can also change the job board messaging on the right-hand side here as well. And this is fully HTML editable, so if you want to add in your Glassdoor link, if you want to add in any uh, videos, like copy and paste your recruitment video link from YouTube, um, you can add anything into this job board messaging box um, that will give some more information you know, to, to the candidate that's viewing this so that they have a little bit more idea about you know, why they should work there and, and keep that messaging consistent across all of your platforms. Um, if you do have a savvy uh, CSS team or you yourself are a savvy CSS person, um, you can come in and modify the whole layout um, using CSS. So you can get really creative here if you want to. Um, the last thing I'm going to touch on briefly is the ability to do the same thing for your messaging templates. And Amber's going to talk about this a little bit too, um, but I just want to show you where you can access all of these in Jazz. So if you come to templates and then emails, you'll be able to um, modify the existing replies that are going out to candidates automatically. So this is where you can come in and change this. And again, fully HTML editable, and you can uh, modify the fonts and the colors and everything uh, this way here, as well as add in photos. Um, you can do this for all of the kind of canned letters in Jazz, and then you can create your own custom templates uh, as well. So if you want to create your own template, you would just hit new email, and you have the ability to create your own um, emails with attachments as well. So I just wanted to kind of touch on this. So while you're thinking about ways to kind of get creative and be scrappy with branding that you have Jazz um, in your toolbox as well. So don't forget about the things that are, are currently available to you. And Amber will go into a little more detail, but I just wanted to remind you guys uh, where you can find all that information in Jazz. All right, so I am gonna hand it back off to Amber and she's gonna keep going here. There we go. All right. Thanks, Lila. Um, so one thing, too, before I move on, I did want to touch on a couple of things in regards to our new careers page that I just showed you. Um, we just launched that new and improved careers page, I would say, two months ago. Um, so it's still 
also a work in progress. And in addition to, you know, photos and just having it be a little bit more dynamic, um, we're also creating a recruitment video. And um, a way for us to do this on a low-cost version is that we brought in a film student intern <laughs> who is building that video for us. Um, so it's going to be about a one to two minute segment that will feature on the careers page that's showing, you know, an authentic, you know, look into the company, um, employees working, probably some surf forecasting, our forecasters, you know, maybe providing some live examples of live content, um, you know, the office environment, which um, I'll probably get a lot of you jealous today on the view that we have here at, at work, which is a lot of what I focus on on social media because it's just so amazing. Um, and then, you know, showcasing a little bit about some events that we've participated in recently. We just did a huge Earth Day beach cleanup. Um, we participated in the Big Wave Awards that were here locally a couple weeks ago. So just, you know, snippets of that that will also be included into the video. So I'm super excited to see how that turns out because it's going to be awesome. And like I said, it is very, very low cost because an intern is putting that together with, the help, you know, the help of our video production team in-house. But, um, you know, he's able to kind of manage that project, which is also a really great experience for him. So moving forward, I wanted to just talk about what our job postings used to look like. So, <clears throat> you know, here we went through this really great kind of remarketing of our careers page, but yet our actual job descriptions still were looking the way that they used to look um, forever. So pretty boring, black and white, lots of bullets, blah, blah, blah. Um, so this is a super easy way to just kind of revamp this in addition to your careers page. This is what they look like now. Much more engaging, um, just the verbiage, it's exciting. It's, you know, getting people excited to want to work for your company. Why, why should you work here? Who are you? Um, I also really like the fact that with our new careers page, it's kind of fun. It shows a little bit about who we are with the weather, the surf conditions. Um, so it's just more engaging and more exciting to the applicant. So once again, super easy fix that you can do for free on your own. So, social media. So let's talk about this. <laughs> LinkedIn, Glassdoor, and Instagram is what I'm going to focus on today. Um, I think the the main strategy here with social media, you know, besides employment branding, is just to make people curious about what you are and who you are. Um, I've learned to partner and become really close with my marketing team, uh, especially because I'm a one-person HR team, <laughs> and there's only one of me to manage, you know, employment branding among everything else that I'm doing, so I've had a great, you know, opportunity to partner with marketing and have them help me, so they actually own the Instagram account for me. And you can see their content that they post, some examples there, it's, it's a lot more creative. It's more almost design-esque, um, just targeting that demographic on Instagram. But there is this great link at the top that says, you know, has the link directly to our careers page so people can go in there. Um, Glassdoor, we'll talk more in detail about Glassdoor. Um, but you can, from a free perspective, go under the employer central piece and update all of your information and for, from the company overview, but you can also create content there and post regular updates. So I usually cross market between LinkedIn and Glassdoor, photos that I post of events, um, if there's an interesting company update, I'll post that there. And then you can also manage um, responses to reviews and things that you'll get online. So that's all for free. Glassdoor definitely, you know, has a, a buy -in piece that you can look into and once again I've never had the budget to be able to do this so this has been a great opportunity for me to just take advantage of Glassdoor and utilize it to our full potential and like I said we'll go into more detail on the success that I've had with Glassdoor. Um, LinkedIn, um, I'm sure most of you if you have a heavy hand in recruiting kind of live in LinkedIn. Um, I definitely do. So I post regular updates and I have the admin rights to our company page. So I share admin rights between myself and um, our social media manager for marketing. So he typically will post company updates where I'm posting more like the photos that I take around the office. And I'll show you some examples of that on the next few slides. Um, depending on time, I think it's you know, depending on how much your workload is and how your recruiting strategy is defined at the company in terms of people, um, I try to post 
on average once a week. I'd love to do more. I don't have time um, right now to do that with all of the HR hats that I wear, but I do try to post something at least once a week. If not, there's definitely weeks if we have a lot of different events going on. You know, I may post, you know, a couple times in a day sometimes, a couple times during the week. It just depends. So, um, you know, I think it's just setting realistic expectations for you and what you can handle. Um, but the photos, just to give you perspective on the analytics, you can see analytics when you have the admin rights to your Surfline um, or your company page. And the photos have a much bigger success rate than the company updates that our social media manager provides. So just some food for thought there. But I think social media... Yeah, I can't say enough about it. I think if you don't have a strategy in place to help you gear up for recruitment, you just definitely should think about it and partner with your marketing team to make that happen because it's just been such a huge piece about what we do here, um, and it's been a lot of fun. So my main rule of thumb when using social media is just to be authentic. Um, be aware of the, com of the audience that you're trying to target and that you're trying to market to when defining your social media strategy. So there's so many different outlets that you can look into. Um, you know, I'm just highlighted those three, but you know, there's Twitter, there's Snapchat. You just need to think about, you know, what makes sense for you and your brand and the company and the audience that you want to attract. So here are some examples <clears throat> of some of our most liked posts. Um, the first one here with um, our employee, that's actually our director of marketing, sitting in a massage chair with his dog on his lap and his laptop and a surfboard in the background. That was not a staged photo. Um, I you know, walk around the office with my phone and I'll snap photos like this when I see it, um, just with my iPhone. So super easy way to be like, that is so cool, this is real life, this is who we are as a company, and that got a huge response. Um, the middle collage, I will do some collages as well. So um, the picture in the right hand top right corner that says Surf Snack Chill, um, that's a picture of our founder. I think that was probably taken in the 70s or 80s. And he passed away a few years ago. And so this was on his birthday. We decided to put together a cool little event for our employees that, you know, People went out and surfed during the day, so you can see a couple of our employees with their surfboards wearing their wetsuits out on our patio to cheersing and celebrating our founder, Sean Collins, with cupcakes, wine, and beer, and it was just a great event. And then um, I think the bottom one is pretty self-explanatory, a surfing Santa with, with a bunch of kids. That's always a big hit, and um, that was very well liked during the holidays. Um, here's a couple more examples. Um, you can get a glimpse into what our office looks like here um, with everyone cheersing. We were celebrating a recent company milestone here, and we have this amazing patio space, and our office literally looks right out to the beach in the Huntington Beach Pier. Um, so we take full advantage as a company, um, you know, out on this, on this space. People have meetings out here. I've actually seen our engineers sitting outside with laptops coding out on the patio to, you know, having a great company event out here. So it's been an amazing, you know, space to work in and our employees love, you know, where they work. And people that do surf, um, I would say about half of our company surfs, the other half does not, but the people that do surf take full advantage as well and go surfing at lunch um, before work or after work. And you don't even have to have people in photos to be successful. So this is an example here too of just wetsuits hanging out to dry with some surfboards. I think I captioned it like must be, waves must be good today. Um, looks like a lot of people are, a lot of employees are out surfing and tagged it with a job link to post, uh, to apply to our, to our job. So that was a big success as well. And then also, you know, showcasing events that we do as a company. So the collage here is our recent Earth Day beach cleanup. So we partnered from an HR perspective, partnered with our marketing team to really leverage this event to not only the community, but for our jobs. And we had um, sponsors that came out for free. We had huge employee participation. I think every single person in the office was out on the beach at some point during the day. We had free food catered. We did an Instagram challenge to find the most obscure piece of trash. Um, so that was really fun. Um, and we had other companies and people from the city and our users coming out to support us in our efforts for our beach cleanup. So that ended up being a really huge event for us and it was so much fun. And it was literally right outside our office. 
And then the bowling picture here was a um, philanthropic event um, for breast cancer. So we had a girls bowling team set up. It was like hippie themed. It was super fun. So that was also a really cool event that we wanted to take pictures of. And this has been one of my most popular posts. This is the view that we look at every day here at Surfline. And this picture was taken on an exceptionally beautiful day um, in Southern California. And I put this picture up on all social media and tagged it with, what does your work view look like? This is ours and we're hiring. And I put the link to our careers page. That was huge for me. Um, and I got a huge response out of that, tons of comments. It was really fun. but. You know, this is one of the reasons why, you know, we all work at Surfline. It's an amazing company, and we have an amazing place to work, and just a ton of great people that work here. So it was fun to be able to, you know, sell that magic out to, you know, the public and, you know, take advantage of what's right in front of us and market that creatively online. And just to kind of go along with that, I pretty much never post just a job posting link anymore. I usually add some sort of visual content to it um, to make it interesting. So just keep that in mind. I just I don't blow up job boards anymore with, hey, we're hiring for you know a software engineer. It usually has some sort of visual stimulation attached to it to attract candidates. So the next thing I want to talk about is just um, encouraging your employees to think like recruiters themselves, especially if you're a very small HR team. Um, so one of the ways you can do that is encouraging your employees first and foremost to keep their LinkedIn profiles up to date. Make sure that they have a picture. Um, I have to assume that all of you with the HR backgrounds that you have um, have really great LinkedIn profile pages. But if you actually look at what's out there from the rest of your employee force, you'll probably be a little scared. <laughs> at least I was, um, candidates do their research, they're on Glassdoor, they're on LinkedIn, they're going to research, you know, who are the employees, who, who is Surfline, um, and making sure that your employees actually have a good LinkedIn profile is key, um, and it's just an easy, quick training that you can do, and I think it's just building that awareness. Um, we all live in LinkedIn, but most of your employees probably don't. Um, so Gavin here is a great example of someone who has, in my opinion, a fantastic LinkedIn profile. Um, he's got great photos. His content is all up to date. That's another thing. You'll go on some of your employee profiles and you'll see that they don't even have your company listed as their current employer. So little things like that that are super easy to fix and it just takes some really easy education. And we did, you know, quick uh, a seminar one day, like a meeting and got everyone on board and it's it's been dramatically different. And the other thing um, that I've done is just leveraging an employee referral program here internally to once again help encourage and motivate employees to think like recruiters and you know, engage with candidates on LinkedIn, provide that authentic voice about what it's like to be an employee here, and reward them with a little referral bonus money if you know, an employee happens out of that. So it's been a great tool for us. And then hashtags. So we've come up with some creative hashtags here to go along with all of our posts. The most popular that we use would be the top three work at Surfline, Surfline Careers, and Surfline HQ. Um, we have amazing sunsets. We have something that we call sunset season here at Surfline, and it's typically in the winter months. And our employees, we encourage them to hashtag Surfline sunsets if they're taking pictures and put it, putting them on their own personal social media. Our Surfline beach cleanup is something that we we'll use annually. That was also the fun hashtag that we used for the um, obscure piece of trash contest. Um, and then surf for lunch for employees that go out and surf on their lunch break. So this has been really fun too and I've actually seen some success from candidates coming in to apply for jobs because they've seen someone on Facebook post a picture of, say, a sunset, and it's turned into someone who's applied for a job here. So it's been great to see that. So Glassdoor. Um, this, these analytics, to me, definitely tell the story of our journey here at Surfline. So I took over our Glassdoor account and actually created our Glassdoor account in March of 2015. Um, this was just simply putting up the information in the company overview section 
starting to post a couple pictures, but we really didn't have reviews on there. Um, in December, I did a presentation to management about the importance of actually getting people to put employee reviews, um, you know, active employees as well as, you know, maybe former employees who've left Surfline. Um, onto you know our reviews page because we had we had zero reviews at that time. You can see a dramatic increase from December to January once I actually got some employee reviews. I now have seven reviews and we're at over a thousand page reviews um, a month and that number still is climbing. So candidates are definitely doing their research. You have to have some information on Glassdoor to look credible to your employees or candidates and your employees and keep that content engaging. You know, like I said, once in a while, post a photo up there, show, you'll get followers to your company on Glassdoor, and this is all for free. I don't pay for anything for Glassdoor. So I would say at least half of the applicants that I interview now, um, I ask them about, you know, their interview experience, how, you know, they they came about hearing about Surfline, and most people, you know, reference Glassdoor at some point in our conversation, that, they, you know, they really liked what they saw, they liked the reviews. We're at a 4.7 star rating so it's super positive um, and it's great so I encourage you there's some templates that you can use in Glassdoor to ask employees or former employees to create a review online and just you know get that awareness out there and that education out there to your employee population and encourage them you know to post a review there's also ways that you know if you ever got a negative review um, you know you can respond to it there's different you know information that you can review in Glassdoor that's for free to you know how do you manage this and um, you know I definitely encourage you know looking into that it's been a huge um, success and win for us So as Lila mentioned before, um, these are a couple, I'm going to show you a couple examples here about how I've leveraged our auto response templates um, to once again create that employ employment branding awareness. So this is our auto response when someone applies. Um, I've customized it, I've put links in so they can follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Glassdoor. And then I've also included my direct con contact information if they have any questions. I just like to really build that employee experience and make it super positive. And then this is a rejected email that I send out as well. So once again, trying to make it really positive. Um, it didn't work out right now, but that doesn't mean that it won't work out in the future with us. So, um, you know, encouraging them to stay in touch and follow us on these social media channels and hopefully, you know, there'll be an opportunity to work together in the future. So this is an example of another way that you can be creative um, with your employment branding efforts um, is to nominate your company for awards. Um, I found this particular award nomination last fall. It's called uh, the Timmy Awards. So um, a company called Tech in Motion put this on. I put in a free nomination for best technology work culture and we were actually chosen as a finalist. So not only did I get amazing free publicity from the tech in motion side of, you know, presenting and and talking about the awards and getting people to vote. I was able to leverage this too within our, you know, internal employees. Um, not only does it make your employees really proud to say, you know, we're a finalist in this category, this is awesome. You're getting great publicity from your employees to market it, to try to get people to, you know, vote for your company, you want to win, um, getting them to, you know, post that all over social media. I did a ton of social marketing at that point. Um, it, it was a lot of fun. And I think the other important thing to do is when you do go through a nomination is that you also make sure that you do a photo recap. So these were pictures that we took during the event. Um, I was posting, you know, on LinkedIn and tweeting during the event. I also followed up after the fact the next day um, and let people know about the outcome. Um, unfortunately, we did not win in our category, but it was a super great experience for everyone. We had a lot of fun that night and it was just a total win for Surfline overall. So I want to talk about my successes. Um, since I joined Surfline and we have the applicant tracking system with Jazz, we've received over 3,000 applicants for the jobs that we've hired. And I have made 40 hires through these efforts, and we are about an 80-person company. So over half the company almost I have hired in a little over a year with really no budget. 
in this crazy competitive job market, most of these hires falling under the tech area of the business, being engineers and product people. So it's been a huge win for us. It's been so much fun. And, you know, I just, I love wearing this hat and I love being able to think about, you know, what is the next um, best thing that can happen to help us leverage our employment branding efforts. So in final review, I just want to encourage you guys to look at your careers page. Is it selling the dream of working for your company? Are your job descriptions engaging? Are they getting your dream candidates to apply? Making sure you have a strong ATS that will help you both automate and manage the awesome candidate experience as well as enhance your employment branding efforts. Use social media as the authentic voice of your company, building awareness and also attracting talent. Educate your employees. Think like recruiters. Build great LinkedIn profiles and submit reviews on Glassdoor. Seek out ways to nominate your company for awards. Gain free publicity and proud employees. It's a double win. And always continue to think outside the box. Be creative and have fun with your employment branding strategy. So that's it for me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Amber. That was great. Um, Thank you. And if you guys have questions um, for Amber, please feel free to ask them now. I know we did get one going through. Um, and if there's some more questions, feel free to ask. Um, while you guys are thinking of your questions, I am just going to uh, remind you of where to find the um, branding your hosted page. Uh, so it's under admin and job board. This is where you can find um, your application page, your hosted page information here. Um, and once again, this is all fully customizable. Um, if you want to go fully customizable, you can do that here. Um, just just as a reminder, and then the templates, the email templates that um, that uh, Amber showed in um, you know the rejection with all her links in there and her automated reply are again in admin and email. So that's just a recap for you guys, really quick. Um, I know we do have some questions coming in. Um, this is for uh, Amber. Amber, do you have a social media guidelines um, for your employees to help keep them up to date? And I believe she's referring to like LinkedIn and just in general social media guidelines for your employees. We don't have any specific. It's been more kind of organic conversations and presentations that we've had at the company. Um, but that's a great idea. I think maybe putting together a guideline and just, um, you know, getting marketing on board. I mean, one thing that we have done here is we'll have like culture committees and we talk about, you know, getting people on board to leverage social media. And I think because I've had such great success and employees are seeing what I'm doing on LinkedIn, it's also too, like from a LinkedIn perspective, you know, getting people to like your posts and sharing it. And that goes to all of their networks and thinking, you know, how your network grows outside through your employees' networks and encouraging that kind of creative, it's just easy to like a post, but get that out there. Um, but I think it's definitely, you know, it's still evolving and a work in progress. And I think, you know, putting together guidelines would be really effective. I just haven't had, have done that yet. It's been, like I said, more organic overall. Awesome. Um, and another question for you. Um, uh, John said, all this information has been great. Uh, what are your thoughts on how effective some of these ideas, uh, particularly re uh, regarding social media, are when recruiting candidates in blue collar jobs like plumbing? Oh, like plumbing. That's interesting. I think, I think everyone from what, you know, everyone is so involved in social media right now. I think once again, it goes into if, you know, if you're trying to hire a plumber, you know, where, where are they looking? Um, are, you know, do they have a Facebook profile? Is that something that you could potentially leverage within, you know, your marketing department? Can you geo-target, you know, maybe there's a couple hundred marketing dollars that they're willing to throw at you to target plumbers that are in your area and show some really cool things. Um, I think too, just even getting out in the public, um, you know, are there meetup groups? Are there networking events that you can be at and start engaging with people on a personal level that then evolves into more social media and just kind of doing your research. And like I said, you know, looking, maybe there are plumbers like Snapchat, you know, <laughs> go on Snapchat and create a Snapchat channel and see what you can do to target specific demographics based on, you know, the roles that you're looking to fill. Fantastic. Cool. Um, well, if anyone does have any follow-up questions too, you can always um, email webinars at jazz.co and um, Amber has her contact information 
um, in the handout as well. And we're going to be sending that handout out. And we're also going to be doing a recording and sending out a recording of this. So anyone who had to step out for a coffee or joined late, um, you're totally going to get the, the um, recording. So don't worry. <laughs> you'll, you'll still be able to rewatch everything. And um, Oh, some great feedback from Quinn. Thanks so much, Quinn. Some, uh, so many good ideas I can use right away, and that this was awesome. So thanks a lot, Quinn. I'm, I'm glad it was helpful for you, and thanks a lot to, to Amber for putting this together. And if you guys have any questions, like I said, you can reach out to Amber directly. Um, you can find her LinkedIn profile, and um, you can also reach out to us at webinars at jazz.co, and we can forward any questions along to Amber, too. Thank you, everyone, and f yeah, definitely feel free to, you know, link up with me on LinkedIn, and I'm happy to answer any questions directly, too, that even may come up, you know, once you start doing some of these tricks on your own, so feel free to reach out to me at any time. All right, thanks so much, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day.